everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Painter New channel here today on YouTube. My name is Chris Papa, and I'm really happy to have you here with me today to talk about art supplies and what supplies you should be buying as a beginner artist. Now, if you were looking for a video where someone was going to stand here and just give you a detailed list of what supplies you need to buy, such as what paints and canvases you need to buy and what brushes, feel free to click on any of these surrounding recommended videos off to the side and you will find a boring video like that. Today, we are going to be specifically talking about art supply costs and how much you should be spending on supplies as a beginner artist. I'm very passionate about this topic, and the reason why is because I absolutely hate seeing beginner artists getting taken advantage of and ripped off and being persuaded that they have to spend all this money on these expensive fancy art supplies and, you know, buying an artist's special brush line or, you know, these special palette knives and canvases. It's complete nonsense and it's a scam. What's going to make you a better artist is learning art techniques such as perspective, how to work with colors, how to work with light and dark in your paintings, how to position your objects, and just generally how to work with the paint, the flow, and things like that. Art techniques. Learning art techniques is what's going to make you a better artist, not some special fancy supplies. And just for a stupid analogy, right, let's talk about cooking for an example. Let's say you took Wolfgang Puck, an expert professional chef who has been cooking his entire life, and then you take me. I'm a horrible cook. Wolfgang Puck is placed in a kitchen and he's given cheap, cheap bowls, cheap um, pans and pots and cheap knives and just cheap supplies, and he's handed a recipe and told to make that recipe. Then let's say a beginner cook like myself is placed in the kitchen next to Wolfgang Puck, but I'm giving, given the state-of-the-art cooking equipment and a better stove and just like better supplies to produce and cook the same recipe that he's assigned. And let's say it's a challenge and we're both tasked with doing that. Whose meal do you think is going to come out better? I think the answer is obvious that Wolfgang Puck will produce a better meal than I would as a beginner cook. And the reason why is not because of the equipment being used, it's because of the experience he has. So that is the objective of this video. I will give a couple of recommendations at the very end, um, just high level recommendations on what generally what supplies I've had better or worse luck with, but it's going to be very brief. And instead of just sitting here and giving you a list of supplies and telling you what you should and shouldn't buy, I decided to do a real-life experiment where I did two identical paintings, which you could see right here to my side, and one of these paintings cost five times the amount to produce than the other one. So I did all the math. One of them cost me a little over two dollars to produce using a cheap canvas I bought in a big pack and um, a cheaper um, acrylic paint. I was using Liquitex Basics on one of them. And on the other one, I was using a Golden Acrylics, which is the most expensive acrylic paint um, sold in the store where I purchased it. And I specifically asked the cashier that, and he said, yes, that's the most expensive one. So for this experiment, I, I went and bought the most expensive acrylic paint I could and the most expensive canvas that I could and I did one painting with Liquitex Basic paint and a cheap canvas, and then I did the exact same painting with, a, uh, with golden acrylics paints and a Belgian linen canvas made by Fredericks. And I'm going to just show both of those paintings right now, and um, I'm going to just label them Painting A and Painting B. And you can tell me, or just make a decision and decide which one you think was the more expensive painting to make. So now that I showed you the two paintings and you have decided for yourself what one you think was the more expensive one, I'm about to tell you the answer, but first I'm just going to go through some statistics that I took on this. So I posted the same two photos that I just showed you on the Painter New Facebook group and 119 people in total responded to the poll. 
Now, 66 of those 119 people who voted thought painting A was the one that was done with the more expensive supplies, which is 55% of the votes thought painting A was the more expensive one. 53 of the 119 votes thought that painting B was the more expensive one, which equates to 45%. So it was fairly a 50-50 split, but with a slight advantage and more people voting that painting A was the more expensive painting. Now I hate to break it to you, but painting A was the cheaper painting. Painting A cost me around $2 to make, and that was with the assumption of the cost of the canvas and assuming that I used one ounce total of Liquitex Basic Paint, which I did the math and calculated cost me $1 per ounce on average. Now painting B cost me a little over $11 to produce, um, $8 of that was the um, Belgian linen canvas that I purchased. It was a Frederick's Belgian linen canvas, one that I've never used before. It was $8 for a little 8x10 canvas. Crazy, right? And then um, golden acrylics, I spent around $80 on a whole bunch of different colors of golden acrylics, little 2-ounce tubes, to do painting B. And again, assuming I did uh, that I used one ounce of paint, I did the math that equates to $3.38 per ounce. So this painting cost me $11.38 to produce. As painting A, I mentioned, cost $2 to produce. So in comparison, painting B cost five times the price. But to somebody viewing it for the first time, they're not going to know the difference. When was the last time you went into an art gallery and it said under the painting, you know, you have a nice painting there, it has the artist's name, it has the date and maybe the name of the painting. When was the last time you saw a list of the supplies that the artist used? That never happens because that doesn't influence and impact the final value and creative artistic value of the final product. There are certain advantages of the more expensive supplies, I will say. I mean, I'm not going to totally knock them. I understand that a lot of them have are better for longevity and archival quality and things like that. But again, I can't stress it enough. The point I'm trying to make is, as a new artist, a lot of people get into this vicious cycle because you go out and you spend all this money on all these expensive supplies. Let's say you spend $200, $300 on expensive professional art supplies and you think, yep, this is going to make me a great painter. I need this to learn how to paint. Then you get nervous to use those expensive supplies because you don't want to like ruin them, right? Like you don't want to waste them on learning. So what I encourage people to do is go to Walmart, go to a, you know, a, some clearance cheap store and buy packs of like canvas panels, buy canvas paper, buy cheap canvases. Um, the only thing that I would say is worth spending a little bit more money on would be brushes. Don't buy brushes that come in like a big value pack type of bag. Go to a, a craft store like Michael's and they will have all of the individual brushes in the um, these like little bins and those are kind of the ones you want to go after. But even those, you're going to spend maybe like 2 to $3 per brush for the like entry student level brushes, which I use to do my paintings, and they're great. Uh, but then they also have like the more expensive ones. I've bought some of the more expensive ones. I've used them. Some of them do last a little bit longer. But, you know, when, if you're just starting out, buy the cheap stuff. You will be fine. So now I'm just going to show a little bit of my shopping adventure um, when I went to buy the expensive supplies and what my experience was. So I'm making a special trip right now just for this video and I'm driving to one of my favorite art supply stores. It's called Jerry's Artorama. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some expensive high-end acrylic painting supplies that I normally would never buy and probably ones that I've never used before because of the price point. And I'm going to be creating like I said, two of the exact same painting, one version of it with cheap supplies and one with expensive supplies. What I want you to get out of this video is you don't have to spend a million dollars to become a great artist and that by buying cheaper supplies when you're first starting out to practice will rid you of that stress of, you know, ruining these expensive supplies that you're buying or wasting them. All right, so here we are at Jerry's Artorama. It is a dedicated art supply store. So it's not like a craft store like Michael's or anything like that. 
It is specifically for artist supplies. I'm gonna head inside now. All right, guys, it's really busy in here today, but this is the acrylic aisle here. You can just see the selection and all various different prices and everything. And then over here is the oil aisle. As you can see, I'm like a kid in a candy store here. This place is huge. There's a lot of artists in here today. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna go to the acrylic section now and pick some very expensive acrylic paints from here. All right, let's see. These are Belgian linen. It's 1040 for one eight by 10. All right, so he's calculating the damage now. <laughs> there is a 20% promotion, so I'll get a little discount there, but he also um, told me that these golden paints are the most expensive ones they have. I'll tell you, the total without the discount is 98.87. Okay, 98.87 without the discount, and that includes a few other things I bought too. So 87.70. 87.70. All right. All right, everyone. So I just got back out to my car after my little um, shopping trip in Jerry's Arama. Um, I'm looking at my receipt again. I spent a total of $87 and some change. Um, that includes some of the expensive supplies I was talking about. Um, I bought um, some tubes of golden acrylics and also a $10 Frederick's 8x10 canvas, 10 bucks for one. This 8x10, just for this experiment, this little tiny 8x10 was $10, and then there was a 20% discount, so it was $8 in the end for one. $8 with a discount for one 8x10 canvas. Crazy. Couple things, um, I was talking to the gentleman who was ringing me out, um, telling him a little bit about what I was doing, and he mentioned that there's a local um, lady in the area who was shopping in here and apparently she's I don't, he didn't give me a name but she's like some you know really famous artist and um, I guess she founded some like famous art guild in the area or something like that and she was shopping for three dollar brushes so just to you know show you that professional artists paint with whatever they want to paint with and he said he was having this exact same conversation with her and um, she was telling him about her son and how he just paints with all kinds of cheap supplies. While I was in there, I also saw, uh, you can't make this up, I saw a um, lady shopping with her two daughters in the acrylic aisle where I was shopping for these paints. And I guess she had a gift card and she was saying about how, she was trying to explain to her daughters about how they say it's the paint that has such a big impact on the painting rather than the brushes. So don't worry about the brushes, but you wanna make sure you invest a lot of money in the paint. And I was just sitting there like this, just like, no, 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 biting my tongue. You know, I didn't wanna get involved, but it just pained me to hear her saying that. Someone somewhere at some point in time convinced her that you need to buy expensive paint to make your art come out nice. So, you know, that's the whole goal of this video is that that is not true. So as you can see, I did spend quite a bit of time doing this experiment between buying the supplies, doing two of these paintings, and then polling everyone in the Paint Your New Facebook group. But I think it really solidified my point that, see, like these paintings, even though they're done on various different um, qualities of art supplies, I have the cheap one and the more expensive one, the final product didn't have to do with the supplies, it had to do with my skill as an artist. So a lot of people thought painting A was the more expensive one, some people thought painting B was because the colors were a little bit richer, and people had various different reasons as to why they thought which one was more expensive. Um, I got a lot of comments on the posts that I posted in the Facebook group that the canvas on B looked cheap because you could see all the canvas still through it. Um, I, but then on the flip side, a lot of people said the colors looked richer in painting B, um, and then vice versa. The canvas on this one, people thought looked like it flowed better, so it was therefore better quality, but the colors looked a little more washed out. Another thing is I tried to recreate the painting as, as best as I could to make them identical, but it's possible that I could have used some slightly darker colors on the bottom. 
And honestly, all in all, I had a better experience using the cheaper supplies. Um, the expensive supplies were ones I haven't used before, so I used golden acrylics. Um, the color was really nice on those, um, but I found that it dried really fast, and um, it was a little too thick because I think it was just drying really fast. And not in like a, not thick in like a good way. Like I've had a great experience with Liquitex heavy body acrylics, which are around the same price. Those are very good paints, um, but you know, on the flip side, I use Liquitex basics all the time, which are very they flow very nicely, and I've had a great experience with those. Um, also, the Belgian linen canvas for this expensive one, I did not like it. Um, it, it. There was a lot of canvas texture to it. I had to like really spend a lot of time trying to fill little canvas holes. And, you know, thinking back, I probably should have, like, just sewed the whole canvas again to make it smoother or something like that. Um, but either way, I mean, just because something's more expensive doesn't mean it's better. So, I mean, I think you really got the point I'm trying to make here. So thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something new. I certainly did. And um, please remember to subscribe and like this video. Check out some of my other tutorials as well as my personal website, chrispapafineart.com. And please join the Painter in You Facebook group if you're interested in networking with other artists like yourself of all varying different levels of experience. And it's a great place to learn and have various different art discussions. And lately we've been having a lot of fun group activities as well. So I will leave all those fun links in the video description. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.